In this informative video we will explore the zones of pulmonary blood flow. The blood pressure in the foot of a standing person can be as much as 90 mm of mercury greater than the pressure at the level of the heart. This is caused by hydrostatic pressure, that is, by the weight of the blood itself in the blood vessels. The same effect, but to a lesser degree, occurs in the lungs. In the normal, upright adult, the lowest point in the lungs is about 30 cm below the highest point. This represents a 23 mm of mercury pressure difference, about 15 mm of mercury of which is above the heart and 8 below. That is, the pulmonary arterial pressure in the uppermost portion of the lung of a standing person is about 15 mm of mercury less than the pulmonary arterial pressure at the level of the heart, and the pressure in the lowest portion of the lungs is about 8 mm of mercury greater. Such pressure differences have profound effects on blood flow through the different areas of the lungs. The capillary and the alveolar walls are distended by the blood pressure inside them but simultaneously are compressed by the alveolar air pressure on their outsides. Therefore, any time the lung alveolar air pressure becomes greater than the capillary blood pressure, the capillaries close and there is no blood flow. Under different normal and pathological lung conditions, one may find any one of three possible zones, patterns, of pulmonary blood flow. Zone 1 no blood flow during all portions of the cardiac cycle because the local alveolar capillary pressure in that area of the lung never rises higher than the alveolar air pressure during any part of the cardiac cycle. Zone 2. Intermittent blood flow only during the peaks of pulmonary arterial pressure because the systolic pressure is then greater than the alveolar air pressure, but the diastolic pressure is less than the alveolar air pressure. Zone 3. Continuous blood flow because the alveolar capillary pressure remains greater than alveolar air pressure during the entire cardiac cycle. Normally, the lungs have only zones 2 and 3 blood. Flow, zone 2, intermittent flow, in the apices and zone 3, continuous flow, in all the lower areas. Zone 2 blood flow begins in the normal lungs about 10 cm above the mid-level of the heart and extends. From there to the top of the lungs. In the lower regions of the lungs, from about 10 cm. Above the level of the heart all the way to the bottom of the lungs, the pulmonary arterial pressure during both systole and diastole remains greater than the zero alveolar air pressure. Therefore, there is continuous flow through the alveolar capillaries or zone 3 blood flow. Also, when a person is lying down, no part of the lung is more than a few centimeters above the level of the heart. In this case, blood flow in a normal person is entirely zone 3 blood flow, including the lung apices. Zone 1 blood flow occurs only under abnormal conditions. Zone 1 blood flow, which means no blood flow at any time during the cardiac cycle, occurs when either the pulmonary systolic arterial pressure is too low or the alveolar pressure is too high to allow flow. For instance, if an upright person is breathing against a positive air pressure so that the intraalveolar air pressure is at least 10 mm. Hg greater than normal but the pulmonary systolic blood pressure is normal, one would expect zone 1 blood flow, no blood flow, in the lung apices. Another instance in which zone 1 blood flow occurs is in an upright person whose pulmonary systolic arterial pressure is exceedingly low, as might occur after severe blood loss. The blood flow in all parts of the lung increases during exercise. The increase in flow in the top of the lung may be 700 to 800 percent, whereas the increase in the lower part of the lung may be no more than 200 to 300 percent. The reason for these differences is that the pulmonary vascular pressures rise enough during exercise to convert the lung apices from a zone 2 pattern into a zone 3 pattern of flow.